In this tutorial, we are going to begin by setting up our HTML file to get our Phaser 3 game working. We're going to be using GitHub to have our code backed up and also to publish our game using GitHub pages. And we're going to be using Replit as our IDE to test and develop our game. So we're going to start with GitHub. And inside GitHub, we're going to create a new repository. And we're going to give our repository a name that is unique. And we're going to put the course code and then space aliens. We're going to add a readme file like we always do. And then we're going to create repository. Once our repository is created, the first thing we're going to do is go to settings and we're going to go to GitHub pages and turn that on so that GitHub will publish our game for us. And that's going to be the URL where our game is going to be published. The next thing we're going to do is go to GitHub actions and we're going to create a GitHub action that is going to be the GitHub super linter so that it will automatically check our style to make sure that everything is okay. So we're just going to select everything that's currently here and delete it. We're going to go to the course website and go over to references and we're going to get the code that we need for the GitHub super linter. So we'll copy that down. paste that in. Unfortunately, it has spaces. Really, we shouldn't have those, but we're just going to leave it for now. And we're going to commit that. So if we go back to our main repository, and then under actions, that's started up, and we're all set to go. We're going to grab the URL. And we're going to copy that and we're going to go over to Replit. We're going to go into our folders under my REPLs for the course. If you haven't already, create a folder called Final Project. And in here, we're going to create a new REPL and we're going to import it from GitHub and we're going to paste in that URL from GitHub and we're going to import it in. So now we have our GitHub repository connected to this particular REPLIT. And when we commit our code through in REPLIT, it will be saved up to GitHub. Don't forget that you have to select which language you're going to be doing. And in our case, it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we have that set up and the readme, I'm just going to change this header at the beginning so that it gives the course code. And we're going to go back to the course website and we're going to grab this section that we use to update our readme file. And we're going to paste that in. Once again, unfortunately, it brings in extra spaces, so you just have to delete those. And you'll notice that it has places for the owner and repository name. So I'm going to go back to my GitHub page and just grab my GitHub username. And if you select where it says owner and alternate click and say change all occurrences, you'll see that every place where it has owner is selected and you can just paste it in and it will update it. And we're going to do the same thing with the repository name. Alternate click again, change all occurrences. So now our markdown is all set up. We have our title of our project. We have the GitHub super linter um, badge present. 
and we have a badge for Replit so that when you click on this badge, it'll update eventually in GitHub. Um, you can click on that and it'll bring me right back to this Replit. And we have the link where our web page is going to be hosted. So we have the basics all set up and we're going to be ready to go. Before we start, I'm just going to do the first commit. I'm just going to call it initialize and push that through and we're successfully. So now we can start coding. We're going to need two files. The first one is index.html because that is going to be our web page. So I'm just going to go up to new file here and add in index.html. So as we know, every web page must have a reference that it is actually an HTML web page. So this is our beginning of our web, web page, defining that the document actually is HTML. Forgot the beginning HTML tag. So add that in, there we go. We have an ending tag, we have to have a beginning one and I placed in that our web page is actually going to be in English. Make sure that you're just indenting two spaces. If not, go over to settings and make sure indent size is set to two. Don't want that to be four because this is HTML and JavaScript. So inside our web page, the first thing we're going to have is our heading. And for every beginning tag must have an ending tag. Inside the head, we're going to have one metadata tag. And it's just going to set our character set. And we're going to be using UTF-8, which is the standard for the web. The next thing we need is a title for our Web page, and since this is the Space Aliens game, that's going to be our type. And that's all that's going to be present in at the moment. We're just doing a basic setup for our head. We will come back in another tutorial and flush this out a little more. Inside of our web page, we're going to have a single body tag. And inside have to have an end body as well. Inside our body tag, we're going to have two script tags. So the first script tag that we're going to have is a reference to the phaser JavaScript code. And it's going to be pointing to a website that has that code, and we're just going to import that in so that we don't have to keep track of it. It will do it for us. So I'm just gonna grab the URL that we're gonna need for this. Paste that in and format it nicely. So this URL is the link to the phaser code. And if you actually just grab this URL and copy it and open up a new tab and paste it in, you could actually see that this is the actual JavaScript code that we're using. And we don't have to write it. Someone else has written it for us and we just get to use it. The next line the next script is that we're going to have this file called game.javascript and it's going to be in a folder called JavaScript. So we should create this folder that's holding our JavaScript code. And inside this folder, we're going to need a file called game.js. So we create that file and inside this file is where we're going to be placing all of our 
code that's going to make our phaser game show up. So at the moment, this is going to be our HTML page. We just set up the basic head so that we have the character set and the title show up. We reference the phaser distribution code that we're going to be using, and we set up where our game file is going to be. So we're going to commit that through. And we're good to go. So now what we need to do is we need to focus on this game.javascript code. This will be used to actually create our phaser game and we'll be using the phaser distribution. So we're gonna be referencing this piece of JavaScript code. So to begin with, because we're referencing that phaser code, we need to set up a reference to the global phaser code that we're using. If not, when we uh, commit our code through to JavaScript, or sorry, through to GitHub, and the GitHub superlinter checks our code, it's going to say, wait a minute, I don't understand where this phaser thing is coming from. So we just need to say that it's a global variable. We're now going to create a constant, and it's going to be called config, and this is actually a dictionary, and it's going to create hold parameters for setting up our basic phaser game. And we're just going to create a couple of things in here. The first one is called type, and the type is going to be a phaser game, and we're going to set it to auto so that phaser, there's many different ways that you can use phaser and we're just going to use the auto one. So that's the first one. The next one is the width and the height that we want our window to be. And we're actually just going to set this to a standard 1080p screen. So 1920 pixels wide and the height is going to be 1080. So just standard high definition and Depending on our, our window, whether we're on a computer screen, which is why I picked this, because most modern computer screens are that ratio, we're going to have it so that it just auto sizes eventually. The next thing that we're going to do is set up the background color. Um, you'll notice that color here is spelt like American. so. Make sure that you're not using Canadian or British style for stating the color. And we're just going to pick this color here so that it shows up slightly different from being black or white. We're going to put more things here eventually, but for now we're just going to leave them there. Okay, once we have this configuration file done, what we're going to do is we're going to create another constant and it's going to be called game because we're making a game and game is going to be a new phaser. So that showed up because we have this global things referenced here and game. And this new phaser game needs one parameter and the parameter it needs is this configuration variable that we just created. And technically that's all you need, but since we're not really using this variable at the moment, our GitHub superlinter gets freaked out. So we're just going to print it out to the console and we'll eventually stop doing that. But for now, we'll just print this variable out to the console. Just didn't want that to happen. And over in the shell, we will see it spit out what this variable is and it'll have a whole bunch of parameters. So that's it for our game.javascript. So we're going to commit that through.
So now we have two files. We have our basic web page that just references the JavaScript library that we're using, Phaser, and then says go and run this game.javascript file. And our game.javascript file sets up a few configuration things, tells us the size of our screen and the color that the background is going to be. So our game at the moment is just going to be a single color that is this ratio. And then we say, okay, our game is using the phaser library and pass in this configuration parameter. So if we hit the run button now, you'll notice that our screen turns this dark blue grayish color, which is actually this particular color. And you'll notice over here in the shell, it spit out a whole bunch of parameters. And this is what that game constant is actually holding. And you'll notice in the configuration, sorry. In the configuration, we have the width and the height that we actually set right here. And there's a whole bunch of default parameters that it's holding in this configuration file as well. So we could open it up in a new tab. Actually, I don't think this will work. No, it won't. You have to keep it small. So this is our game at the moment. It's not too exciting, but it is proving that the phaser library is actually working because it's set to this particular color. So we are off and running. We might be able to go to GitHub and click on this link. It might take some time. So if it doesn't work instantaneously, just give it some time. But there we go. That's our game showing up at the moment. So that's all we're going to do at the current time for getting our game set up.